Hello everyone, this is David the Real Medvite and today I want to talk about some of the recent actions some of our Orthodox hierarchs have done in the United States. This video is not going to be, I'm not really going to be talking about our hierarchs outside of the United States. So this is specifically going to be in the United States regarding their actions about the George Floyd riots. And it's going to be criti critical. I think we have to be at times critical and sometimes we can't really keep our silence. So this I want to start with a question. It's a really central question to this whole issue. Why is our hierarch, Archbishop Elpidophoros, outside joining some protest instead of opening the churches? To me, that does not make any sense. Remember, churches are closed because of coronavirus. Oh, but by the way, uh, I'm going to go join some protests and march with thousands of people. So it seems like the message we're getting here is that we cannot go to church as Christians. We cannot go to church because that's too dangerous. We might get sick. What, what can we do then? What are we allowed to do? Well, we can go outside and march. We can go out and protest with thousands of people. Okay, what else can we do? Well, we can riot. We can destroy properties. We can attack people. We can loot stores. We can rob people, rob businesses. We can do all of these things, but we can't go to church for some reason. And... This is a huge problem. This has to be like spammed basically at archbishops, at, at Orthodox hierarchs. Let us go to church. If we, if they can protest, let us go to church. Let please allow us to go to church. Because what's the whole purpose if if we are fine with this? Right? And this is not the first time something like this has happened. If you remember, Archbishop Yakovos went on a march with Martin Luther King. And in this, I will want to critique not really the intention of Archbishop Yakovos, uh, but rather that Martin Luther King himself should not be someone that should be marched with because he denies the divinity of Christ. And maybe I am too harsh, but I will say that anyone that denies the divinity of Christ, anyone that rejects Christ, is not someone that you should be marching with. You might have intentions that are parallel with that person, sure, I, there are many people that I have parallel intentions with that don't share my religious beliefs, but I'm never going to be on the same team with those people. I'm only going to be on the same team with people who believe in Christ. And so this is not the, this is not the first time that this has happened. This is Archbishop Elpidophoros is trying to replicate um, Archbishop Yakovos. And I don't really mean to condemn, like say, oh, Archbishop Yakovos is an evil, stupid, bad, damned person. No, no I'm not saying that. Um, I'm just saying I won't really do it. <laughs> and I will definitely not do this. This is, I think, a bigger issue. This is something, a a bigger problem. He's trying to be an Archbishop Yakovos, but he's Archbishop Pidophoros is basically just being something else. And I don't even have to mention the Antichrist element of these protests because a lot of the people, a lot of the people in these protests are political liberals and... Again, I don't have to tell you what the problem with those people have. With, with liberals, some people might say, oh, you know, isn't he trying to just make orthodoxy look better for these people? And it's good because they should come to Christ and then they, everything can be fixed out. Right? Find, find a good way to make it sound piety-like because I can't do that because I can't bullshit. I'm bad at bullshitting. Someone that's good at bullshitting can make, it, make that sound Christian, quote-unquote Christian, but... For those people that will say that, I will respond that that does not work because these people hate Christianity wholesale. Liberals hate Christianity absolutely. If you give them an inch, if you give them a finger, they will take your whole arm. This is the, the, this is the kind of people they are and this is a great example of it. This whole comment, this whole tweet is all about, oh, you did this beautiful but now you must do even more and if you do more and you say hey are you going to be orthodox now and oh you know you need to do more of this you need to do this you need to do that and every time you see someone that's been exposed as a previous as someone that was racist or is racist these people will attack that person and they will never let go they will never never ever let go and so let me let's read what this what this person says he, uh, they say, Your Eminence, I'm impressed by the show of solidarity, but now I would like to see you and the Archdiocese state that Black Lives Matter, number one, Orthodox already presupposes that, 
that you don't need to do that. And number two, Father Joshua Shuping has a very good critique of the slogan Black Lives Matter. And that is that that slogan reinforces the idea of race already. Who said that two days ago? Oh, yeah, that was me who said that. Um, I said I literally said the same thing. I literally said that this is inherently racistic in their own standards. And Father Joshua Shuping is basically saying the same. He's saying this whole slogan is reinforcing the idea of race, which is something that it claims to try to prevent. And so it doesn't work. And then he moves on to say, which I 100% agree with, black lives don't matter because they're black. Black lives matter because they're human lives. All human lives matter because they're all made in the image of God. Precisely. Can any other philosophy, especially in the modern available philosophies that you have present today, account for that, given, given ethic, ethical justification for why lives even matter in the first place? They can't. They can't do that. Only Christianity can. Sorry. To make donations to organizations aligned with the movement, like Antifa, Black Lives Matter, you mean those organizations that riot, loot, attack people? If you think that the church will donate money to these people, and if you think these people will use that in a Christ-like manner, then I'm sorry, but you're one of the stupidest, most retarded people I've ever seen on this planet. There's no hope for you. And your IQ is on the single digits in the negatives. Not, it's not even positive. It's, you're, you're that bad. Your, your intelligence is that bad. Uh, go fix your brain at, I don't know, at an electronic store, I guess. And to present a plan for addressing racism in our parishes. This is very ironic because Greek Orthodox churches are very notorious for being anti-convert slash racist. Um, so it's really interesting how the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese is very, they love to talk about how evil racism is and evils of racism, but they don't deal with the racism in their own parishes in the first place. And I don't think they even tried to do that. And that keeps converts from happening and it creates horror stories that we hear so much today about how bad greek parishes are especially in the east coast now i will say this is not the norm i don't think it's the majority but i think it is significant enough and it's a problem enough next i want to talk about what i think about the church position on racism my thoughts these are my opinions so feel free to take take this with a grain of salt these are just my opinions Maybe there are people that have better opinions. This is not really my full detailed breakdown um, because I don't really want to do that. I think it's a bit too risky for me. But I will say that I don't think racism is really an issue that the church can or should tackle. Um, I think they, we can tackle in a different manner. I think the way we can tackle is by showcasing that orthodoxy is the only religion, the only worldview that can properly and legitimately and consistently apply the understanding of human dignity compared to any other worldviews. I think if you did that, that will probably be very better than whatever or Harax would do. So I kind of think, especially someone made a good point um, on Twitter. He, he said something like, uh, let me remember, he said, but he pointed out that the archbishop is Greek and he has Turkish citizenship, right? He was an exarch of Bursa and he's, he hasn't even been here for a long time. And he's inserting himself into American culture politics when he himself is not even an American. He's a Greek with a Turkish citizenship. He's basically me. <laughs> and why is he doing this? It doesn't make any sense. And so... Yeah, I mean, I think I think there are other there's way better, if way more efficient ways than trying to just sounding like everyone else. I mean, oh, racism is an evil and we should avoid it. Like, we've heard this from everyone. We don't really need to hear this from the church. Uh, but at the same time, I want to say that there are ten. You can count ten, twenty. You can count many other issues that the Orthodox Church can tackle that are much, much bigger than racism. And I will count them. I'll try to keep it short. But number one will be atheism. 
right? Atheism in general, the atheistic society. There's a lack of evangelism that you can count it with that. I'll count it as one, not as two, but as one. Um, Orthodox Christianity is not in mainstream taught and joining protests that only Orthodox Christians themselves will know that you joined them is really not going to help. I mean, how many people do you hear Archbishop Yakovos from? You only hear from Orthodox Christians. Do you hear from a random black person? Oh, you know, there's there was this there's this black that there's this Greek bishop that joined the protests with Martin Luther King. Do you ever hear a Protestant black person say that? No, they don't really care about that. They don't really care about that. It's probably Muslims that joined that protest. Um, number two, there's a huge issue. There's a lack of education, lack of educate, lack of bad catechism for Orthodox Christians. You have Orthodox Christians, they they get born, they get baptized, they go to church, and then they go to church occasionally, sometimes, and then they only go to the major days, and then by the time they go to university, they're so the the atheistic propaganda machine hits them mega hard. To the point where they say, oh, I guess I'm not going to the Orthodox Church anymore. And they renounce the Orthodoxy. And there are some people that say, maybe I'll give the Orthodox Church a second chance. Maybe I didn't give it a good enough chance the first time, so I'll give it a second chance. But the point here I'm making is that we're not, we're not arming Orthodox Christians with, defend, with defending the faith. Right? Scripture tells us that we should be able to give an apology. When I say apology, defense of our faith. This is not done by our Orthodox hierarchs. And this is a huge, huge issue. And it's a huge issue because there is a very low percentage of Orthodox retention. I can't even, I don't even want to look at the statistics. It's, it's, it's so horrible. It's terrible. But there's a huge problem that Orthodox hierarchs are not addressing. Number three issue, huge issue, pornography. Pornography is literally everywhere. Every single person in the West is dealing with this problem. I would say every single person in the world nearly is dealing with this problem. This is unprecedented. And think of the average day of a man. Like let me let me give myself as an example. I go I go outside. I'm walking outside. Beautiful day. Looking at people. So wonderful. Everything's so colorful. Everything's so great. Oh, what do I see? Oh, I see women dressed up like prostitutes. Like for lack of a better term. And I'm not I'm not saying this in a very um, peer clutching, pearl clutching, you know, like oh I saw their leg, whores I saw their leg, they're whores, and I have to, I'm not saying that. When I see someone dressed like a prostitute, I know like what they're dressed like, right? You see someone with mini skirts, you can see their whole leg, you can see the you can see the stuff that their boyfriends haven't even seen, you can you can see massive cleavages. And you're just going outside and, oh, great, I just saw that my, my, my day is ruined. I had to subject myself to that. I go, out, I go online, I browse online, um, I have fun on Twitter, and then randomly I see a pornographic image. Oh, wonderful, beautiful, just a random pornographic image. Thank you, thank you. I really needed that. I really needed to see that. I go and watch television. You know, well, I'm, I'm sick of this world. I want to just chill and watch television and have some fun time. Watch, I watch television and, oh, random sexually suggestive advertisement or think of, think of this happening day by day basis. Trust me, you yourself have seen this happen all the time. I go and watch, I go watch a TV show and, oh, beautiful, spontaneous sex scene. I needed that. I watch a movie. I go to the theater. Oh, a spontaneous sex scene in the theaters. I really, really needed that sexually suggestive, all of these pornographic stuff, prevalent all around the world. I go and I look at a store and what, what is that sexually suggestive advertisement, billboards. I go, I mean, I, I walk in a mall and I see women in underwear advertising underwear. And this is so, this has seemed so, so normalized. And I'm not going to, like, again, I'm not pearl clutch. I'm not going to say, oh, I saw a breastfeeding woman. My days are, like, obviously, you can't really compare that, I think. But uh, it's so prevalent. It's it's everywhere. And our hierarchs are not attacking this. Uh, another issue, heresy. All I need to say is David Bentley Hart, the promoter of originism, the promoter of universalism. Originism is condemned in a fifth ecumenical council. He goes against... Orthodox dogma, he thinks St. Justin is a stupid brute, he believes that Julian the Apostate is the most Christian emperor, 
he supports abortionist politicians. Do you need do I need to say more? And this person is a prominent theologian. If this guy is a theologian, then oh man. We have big, big problems then. This heresy is not dealt with in the Orthodox Church. And as a matter of fact, I will even say that you'd sooner get excommunicated for racism in the Orthodox Church than for heresy. When that happens, you really have to ask yourself what's going on. Lack of elders for the Orthodox faithful to look up to. Mayendorf himself make this assessment in when he's talking about Western captivities. He makes this point. He says one of the one of the things about Orthodox Christianity is having elders, having spiritual fathers that you can look up to, that you can get advice from, that they're very instrumental in your growth in spiritual life. Today we don't have that. You go to an American parish, you don't have that. That will be a huge luxury to be able to have a wise elderly priest that you can always go to and ask questions to and say, Priest, please help me. I have a problem with this, I have a problem with that. They can't you don't have you don't have anyone. The most you have are online people or saints or dead people that you can read from read books about. The church fathers aren't translated enough. We have, we have so many different important writings of the church fathers, so instrumental to our faith, and they're untranslated. But, you know, geniuses like John Baer from Fordham, oh yeah, John Baer has all the time and energy to translate origin. Who gives a fuck about origin? Who's a condemned heretic? Give me St. Gregory of Nyssa. I want translations of St. Gregory of Nyssa. I want St. Gregory the Theologian. I want more of his stuff. I want, you know what? I'm going to get a little freaky. I want to get Leonatus of Jerusalem. Give me some of his stuff. Translate some of his writings. But no, we don't need any of that. What we need is origin. That's what we need. Yeah. Ukraine. Number six. I think this is four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm bad at counting. Seven. Yeah. Number seven. Ukraine. I don't need to say more. Number eight. Church is not having, having enough clergy. Sometimes you go to churches and they mainly have no clergy. They have one or two uh, priests for a huge church. Sometimes they have deacons, and then you look at the deacons, and they don't really act like deacons. And you're asking yourself, okay, what's going on? <laughs> and some churches don't even have priests. Uh, okay, what's going on over here? Sexuality is a huge problem that the Orthodox Church is staying silent about. I'm not saying that it's completely silent. Obviously, there's responses to this. And God, God bless them, there's many... Well, you should never say God bless to a priest because that's the priest's job. But God be with those priests that do speak up against this. Uh, and bishops, but it's mostly in the defensive. They never really take any substantial step against it. But they take substantial steps against this. Which Does it help, does it help people come to Christ? No, it, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. And number 10, Christian persecution, right? There's Christians being persecuted and America and American churches, to my knowledge, um, aren't really doing that much in trying to raise awareness for it. Do we see Orthodox hierarchs talking about Christian persecution, lobbying for the United States to stop Christian persecution in the Middle East? If they are, it's not working. And But they're not really focusing on that, are they? So these are 10 issues that I found. You can probably find a lot more. You can come up with a lot more issues that are much more important for us Orthodox Christians than this. Okay, they're much more important. And I also want to conclude this by saying, I'm willing to be corrected, but to my knowledge, this whole incident was sparked by something that wasn't even racist in and of itself. All Derek Chauvin did was kill a person. Th that's all he did. Do we know that he killed him because he was black? To my knowledge, we don't really know. And as a matter of fact, and this is something I plan to make a video about, there's been many suspect connections about this case. It's very interesting. And I plan on making a video about this, and I will. I think I will make a video about this issue because I think it's very interesting um, information that came to light, and I want people to know about this. So this will conclude the video. Um, thank you all for watching this. Thank you all for listening to me. 
Um, I want what I want to take you away from this is I don't want you to lose faith. I don't want you to despair. Never despair. Worst things have happened in the history of the church. This stuff doesn't even scratch the surface. We used to have simoniacs. We used to have bishops that paid to get their position. Roman Catholics constantly say KGB bishops. You know, there were probably KGB bishops. Why not? There probably were KGB bishops just a couple uh, decades ago. We had way more serious problems. And so all I'm calling for all Orthodox faithful to pray for hierarchs. Pray for Orthodox faithful. Pray for all those involved. Pray that they come to Christ. This is the central message that should be shared. Nothing else but Christ. And always be with Christ. And always be with the church. Remember, we are not quote-unquote trads we are not people that are obsessed with traditionalism rather we are obsessed with christ and with truth that is for us the number one thing nothing else thank you all for watching this i'll see you guys in the next video